And my name is Artemis, and I'm founder of JuicingForFatLoss.tv. And I'm very grateful to Chris and Brian for inviting me here tonight, because uh, I really respect you gentlemen and what you're doing here. Uh, to inspire and educate you to become healthy and radiantly healthy and have well-being in your life is one of the most amazing gifts you could possibly have is your well-being. Yes? Like, how important is your health to you? Very important, yes. And, and that's why you're here tonight, is because your health and your well-being is important. And I'm going to share with you the one thing, the absolute one thing that is the most important thing for your health and well-being. And it will make everything else that Brian and Chris has taught you work better. And I'm going to talk about this one thing. I'm going to talk about what are the blocks, what are the obstacles that keep this thing from being fully embodied and manifesting in your life. And then we're going to do a little um, interaction. So this is going to be interactive. I'm going to ask you to use your words consciously and really speak out loud uh, because we're going to be using our prayers and our affirmations out loud for this class tonight. So when I ask you to say something, just jump in, play, pretend, make it fun, and use your words consciously. And then at the end, I'm going to share the top five life practices that will help you embody and have this one thing every day. When Brian, come in, I, when Brian asked me to come and speak tonight, I was thinking, well, wow, what am I going to talk about? I have 12 years experience in holistic health. I've worked at three clinics. I had two years experience at the Tree of Life with Dr. Gabriel Cousins, where we reversed diabetes in 21 days. And so I have seen miracles. I have seen people die, and I've seen people choose life. And I've seen nutrition and all the things that Chris and Brian teach work to help heal and get people well. So I. I was thinking, what am I going to talk about? What could I possibly give y'all that would add more or enhance what Chris and Brian has already taught you? And I prayed on it, and I contemplated, and I prayed, us, and I recognized that it's this one thing that I'm going to bring to you tonight. And without this one thing, you could drink all the water and stay hydrated. You could eat the best foods, and you could be fit, and you could do your fitness and your exercise, and you could enter your, all these life practices doing everything right, but without this one thing, you would fall short. This one thing is self-love. My capacity to love myself is so important when I'm focusing on my health and well-being. And my ability to love myself and to give myself love and respect is the motivating force, it's the driving force that motivates you to drink water, to eat right, to exercise, to have fitness and well-being. And without self-love, you don't have the motivation. I can only love others to the degree I love myself. And so as I'm giving love to myself, I'm learning how to make a commitment to exercise, make a commitment to eat right, do the things that are important for me and also for my family. There's an interesting way of identifying self-love and then times in your life when you don't feel that self-love. There are two main obstacles to loving yourself. And I'm talking about, I love me. God loves me. I love me just the way I am. God loves me just the way I am. I love myself. I deeply and completely love myself. So this is where we're going to use our words. And I'd like you all to say out loud, with deep feeling, with as much feeling in your heart as you can bring forth, just for fun, as a game, as an experiment, say out loud, repeat after me, I love myself. I love me. I love myself. I love me. God loves me. I love myself. Just the way I am. God loves me. Just the way I am. 
And notice what, what happens in your chest when you say these words. Does anyone feel different after saying that? Raise your hand. What do you notice after you say those words out loud? You in the white. You're calmer, yeah. So there's a peace, a relaxation. When I say those words, I feel warm and fuzzy in my heart because I do love myself to the degree I do, and I'm learning to love myself more each day. Napoleon Hill says, a man, endeavors to, a man teaches best what he endeavors to learn. So I teach best what I'm also learning. So I'm here learning how to love myself more and more each day, and I'm going to give you the two primary blocks to loving yourself that will hold back your hydration, hold back your nutrition, hold back your fitness, hold back all the life practices to your well-being. And those two blocks are shame and guilt. Shame is the emotion of, I'm not worthy, I'm not good enough. How many here in your life have felt at certain times that you weren't good enough to do something? for your mother or father. Everyone should raise your hand. And how many in here don't want to raise your hand? Just raise your hand. Okay, good. Just get that out of the way, you know, because, you know, when I'm talking about shame and guilt, I'm talking about very real emotions. They're not natural emotions, though. They're called reactive emotions. Natural emotions are fear, anger, sadness. Those are natural emotions that we have as human beings. Shame and guilt are reactive emotions that are not natural. They come from unfulfilled needs early in life. Guilt is an emotion where we carry the burdens of others because we, we didn't forgive ourselves for something that was a wrongdoing. So we, we hold guilt when we have not forgiven ourselves for something that did or didn't go right. Shame is not feeling worthy to do something that you were born to do. Everyone say out loud, I love myself. I love, I love me. I love and accept myself just the way I am. Say that again. I love and accept myself just the way I am. That place of self-love is the platform from which all activities of well-being catapult from. I love and accept myself just the way I am is a harmony point of which all your life practices can flow. If you feel shame and guilt, it holds you back. So here's a test. Here's how you can discover if this is acting in your own consciousness, in your own life. How many here in the room are challenged in asking for what you need in life to those you love? Raise your hand. Yeah, how many in here, how many don't want to raise your hand? Okay, go ahead and raise your hand. But how many here have a challenge in communicating what, you're, what you need, what you require to others? It's like, when you, yeah, yeah, I mean, me too, sometimes, you know, like, if I really want something like love, affection, food, money, wealth, if I don't communicate what I require and what I need, am I going to get it? No. What's beneath that is guilt. So if I don't know how to communicate what I need and what I require, it's because I feel guilty. And that unconscious guilt, that what's buried down inside, is actually holding me back from communicating my needs and requirements in life. And this has to do with your physical health and the, the foods and the life practices. This has to do with your financial health and the money you require to build your family and your business. The call compels the answer. And we get to make the call out loud of what I require and what I need to compel the answer to bring it in. And that call is from our heart in prayer. That call is also from our words in speaking out loud, I request, I ask of this. You know, honey, give me some love. You know, make the call. <laughs> My wife is here. She's confirming that I'm good at that. <laughs> so I teach best what I endeavor to learn. I don't have all this figured out yet. I just know that as a coach, I've coached over 8,000 people in the past 12 years. And this pattern of shame and guilt is in everyone I've coached. And I've helped them touch it and transform shame into self-acceptance. I accept me. I accept myself just the way I am. And guilt, and I forgive myself, and I take loving action. I take authority, and I author my life with love. And so we're going to pass some essential oils around, and we're going to do some more exercises with our words. When 
when you're using your words out loud, and go ahead and, and take this oil. This is Idaho Blue Spruce. And this is an oil of courage and confidence. And when you're healing your feelings, everyone say out loud just for fun, I feel. I heal. I feel. I heal. I feel. I heal. Maybe there's a connection there. Maybe your capacity to love yourself is just an expansion of how you feel and being willing to feel again. And when you can feel the meaning in your words deeply enough, you can have instantaneous manifestation in your body. And so what essential oils do, and this essential oil is like Christmas in a bottle. It's, we're getting into the holiday season, so I had to bring the spruce because it smells like a Christmas tree. Yes, it smells like Christmas. You know, it's like Christmas in a bottle. We're, you know, Thanksgiving's a week away. Christmas is a month away. So let's, let's rub the blessing of spruce. Yeah, rub it on your head. Rub it on your head at the base of your throat. Breathe the spruce in. Essential oils enhance prayer. Essential oils enhance your feeling and your ability to feel your feelings. And essential oils, excuse me, essential oils amplify the power of your words to come home into your heart. So now take your hands and cup them over your nose and take three deep breaths. Exhale fully. I know Chris and Brian talked about breath as the foundation of all wellness is your breath. Essential oils and amplify your breath. Now, if you're coughing, that's okay. That's just a little bit of like oxygen stirring up your lungs because essential oils have high levels of oxygen. So now I'd like everyone to say out loud, I accept myself. I love and accept myself. God loves me. God loves and accepts me. Just the way I am. I love me. I accept me. I love and accept myself just the way I am. From this place, change is easy. Making the changes that you need to make for fitness, for exercise, eating better foods, drinking pure water and pure juices and elixirs, when you can love and accept yourself just the way you are and just let everything in your health be okay, you've transformed shame into self-acceptance and now you can catapult forward into making powerful life changes for your health and well-being. What Chris and Brian have been teaching you is not to get you to, to okay. Like, how you doing? Fine. How you doing? I'm okay. How you doing? Great. I feel great. I'm terrific. I'm, I have radiant health. I'm vibrant. You know, I enjoy my vibrant, radiant health. That's what these fellows are teaching you. It's not just to get to okay. It's to get to vibrant, radiant health. How are you doing? I'm excellent. I feel better than I've felt in five years doing Chris and Brian's protocols. That's what you're moving towards. And as you get from okay, just surviving, just getting by, as you move from okay to thriving and terrific and excellent, you will heal your shame and guilt. You will move through patterns of, I'm not good enough. This is hard. On top of shame is low self-esteem. This is hard. I can't. So if you're feeling patterns of I can't and it's hard, just use these words I, I taught you tonight. I love it and accept myself. I love and accept myself just the way I am. And God loves me. And God loves and accepts me just the way I am. And that is a buffer. That's, that's a healing balm to your se sense of self your self-esteem, your self-love. These words strengthen you, and they will strengthen you the most when you can feel the meaning in your words deeply. When you say these words, say them as if you were praying and raising your son from doubt into faith. As if you were, like, consoling your child to believe in themselves. But you actually, yet you're not speaking to your child, you're speaking to yourself. I love and accept myself. I deeply and completely love and accept me just the way I am. Self-love is a verb. It's not a noun. These are actions you take. And I'm going to give you five actions tonight. And I have a little handout here, so pull your handout out. Self-love is a verb. 
It is not a noun. Self-love is daily actions you take to love yourself, to build confidence, clarity, and self-esteem so that all these changes Brian and Chris are asking you to make for breath, for water, for nutrition, for fitness, for exercise, all these things that you make, all these changes you make gradually, step by step, are built from self-love because self-love is a verb. It's an action you take. It's the daily actions you take to stay hydrated, to be healthy, to do your daily movements, to move and breathe. So, one, how, these are the top five life practices to magnify your love and build your self-esteem, your self-love. One, gratitude. Write down gratitude. Build and cultivate appreciation every day. Everyone say, I am grateful. And think of something you're grateful for in your life right now. It could be your family, it could be your job. Think, I am grateful, I am grateful, I am grateful. That's the shortcut to self-love. Okay, I'm giving you guys the secret scrolls tonight, I hope you know. Really, I am. The secret scrolls, divine truth is simple. Falsity ever complex. Truth is simple. Falsity ever complex. This is the most simple and powerful way to build self-love is to just appreciate others. Because as you give a gratitude and appreciation, you are now in alignment with the frequency of self-love. So all you need to do is be thankful every day and your self-love will grow. The vibration of gratitude and appreciation is in alignment with self-appreciation and self-love. What you give another, you give to yourself immediately. When we send prayers to other people for healing, for finance, for blessing, in that moment we are receiving that prayer. So when you give gratitude to others, in that moment you are in the vibration of appreciation. So gratitude and appreciation are, is the most powerful way to build self-love. Number two, write this down, affirmation. So I've given you very powerful affirmations. Speak your prayers and affirmations out loud with deep feeling until you can feel the meaning in your words and you can feel the words in your body. Say, I love myself until your little toe is like going, ah. you know, I can hear you down here. Like, I love and accept myself just the way I am. I love me. God loves me. God loves me just the way I am. Affirmations every day. Now, how many here already use affirmations? Raise your hands. Okay, for all those of you who didn't raise your hands, it's going to be a little weird at first. You're like, why am I saying this out loud? You are saying it to the universe, to God, and to yourself. God is listening every time you speak. So speak words that affirm life, beauty, and love. And you will receive life, beauty, and love. So affirmations, I love myself, I love and accept myself, I deeply and completely love and accept myself just the way I am, came from Louise Hayes, from the book You Can Heal Your Life. And she's the, the queen of affirmation. She's been doing this work with healing words for 40 years. And in 40 years of work, um, she discovered that the simplest, shortest way to help people heal anything was self-love and self-appreciation. So the affirmation, I deeply and completely love and accept myself just the way I am, came from my teacher, Louise Hayes. And I'm giving it to you as a gift, and it's your job to use these words out loud every day and then notice what happens in 21 days or 32 days to your physical health. It may change because now you're cultivating the power of the spoken word and you're speaking words out loud that even if you don't believe them at first, repetition is the mother of perfection. So use affirmations every day to become what you desire to be. By our words we shall be justified, and by our words we shall be condemned, it says. Life and death is in the power of the tongue, it says. And as you use affirmations of life and beauty and love, your body hears you. Write down under two a movie called You Can Heal Your Life. You Can Heal Your Life. How many here have seen that movie, You Can Heal Your Life? Great film. Three, fitness. Easiest way to build self-love in addition to gratitude and affirmations is get your butt in the gym, 
go rebound, go for a walk, do yoga, do qigong, whatever makes you sing and happy. If you feel bad about yourself, if you've had a, a, a challenging day, as soon as you start moving your body, it's creating endorphins and hormones that are endorphins of love, endorphins of self-love. You will feel better when you start moving your body. It's been scientifically documented that fitness and exercise was 90% more efficient than antidepressants. Because when we move our body, it is God in motion. And exercise and fitness creates a positive neurochemical response in the body that will build love and self-love. And so this is very important, movement every day. Number four, nutrition. One of my teachers, Gabriel, said, uh, he's a rabbi, uh, Dr. Gabriel Cousins, he said, food is a love note of God. It's letters written on the plants and the roots and the barks and the stems and the leaves. Food is a love note of God. Eating to affirm life is a beautiful act of self-love. And I'm not talking about vanity. I'm talking about I love myself, so I'm going to give my temple the best foods I can give myself. And then sometimes changing your nutrition will change how you see yourself. And so step four, nutrition, works both ways. Like, you cannot love yourself and have some shame and still choose to eat better. And as you eat better, it's going to change how you feel. So it does work both ways. Nutrition, changing how you eat and what you eat, even if you don't change how you think, it will change how you think and feel because what you eat and what you drink on a daily basis affects how you think and how you feel. What you eat and what you drink every day affects your thoughts and feelings, whether you are conscious of it or not. So eating all the colors in the rainbow, bringing all five flavors in, sweet, sour, salty, bitter, pungent, and eating a high concentration of land and ocean vegetables and alkaline forming foods and green foods and all the beautiful bounty of God's creation in the form of fruits and vegetables, sprouted nuts and seeds, all the colors, all the flavors, that is an act of self-love. Five, okay, I had to put this in here because I love my oils. Essential oils bring the strongest emotional response. When we smell the oils and we have negative emotions, we can breathe in oil and it will lift our spirit. And I have uh, extra handouts I can share with you about specific oils for healing emotions related to low self-esteem, shame, or guilt. So just come to me after our, our class tonight and talk. Your capacity to love yourself is a river of love that flows through you to bless all life everywhere. You can only love others to the degree you love yourself. The degree I believe in myself is the degree to which others will believe in me. There's another way of saying that. Self-love is the lubricant that makes all these other life practices and changes work and work well and work effectively and keep working because every little change you make in your lifestyle that you've learned from Chris and Brian is a little bit of an act of self-love that builds and builds and builds and a year from now you're all going to be different if you commit to doing what they've taught you if you make some commitments and follow up and follow through you will love yourself more a year from now than, than what you love yourself today and as you build and cultivate self-love through gratitude, through affirmations, through fitness, through nutrition, through working with essential oils and really breathing in the breath of God and loving and accepting yourself as you do five things, there is something that magical begins to happen. And people look at you and go, why is he so happy? It's because you love yourself. And it doesn't matter what other people think. And so, I'm very grateful to you, Brian, and you, Chris. Thank you for having me. Yeah.